Hi guys, I'm back. Today I'm going to read Matthew 13 to 18, Proverbs, Proverbs 12 and Psalm 49. Let's get started. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the area. <coughs> See, and great crowds gathered about him, so that he got... <coughs> into a boat and sat down. sat down and the whole crowd stood on the beach and he told them many things in parables see the soul went out to sow and as he sowed some seeds fell all along the path and the birds came into about other seeds fell on rocky road and since they had no root they were the other way other seeds fell among thorns and the thorns grew up and choked them other seeds fell on good soil and produced grain and he, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. He who is ears, let him hear. And the disciples came and said to him, Why do you speak to them in parables? And he answered them, And yet to you it has been given to know the secrets of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been given. For to one who has, more will be given, and he will have an abundance, but the one who has not, even what he has, will be taken away. This is why I will speak to them in parables, meaning that they do not see, and hearing they do not hear, nor do they understand. No, indeed, in their case, the prophecy of Isaiah is fulfilled that says, You will indeed hear, but never understand, and you will indeed see, but never perceive. Now this people's heart has grown dull, and with their ears they can barely hear, with, and their eyes they have closed, lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and turn, and I would heal them. Now blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. But truly I say to you, many prophets and righteous people long to see what you see, and do not see it, and to hear what you hear, but do not hear it. Hear then the parable of the soul. If anyone not hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is being sown in, sown in his heart. This is what was sown but along the path. For what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet he has no root in himself and endures for a while. When tribulation, and when tribulation or persecution arises on account of the word, immediately he falls away. And as for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word. And the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of the riches choke the world word, and it proves unfruitful. As for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands. He indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. He put in another parable between the same. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a man who sowed good seed in his field. Uh, when his while his man was sleeping, his enemies came and sowed seeds among the wheat and went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, and the weeds, weeds appeared also. And the servant of the master of the house came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then does it have weeds? He said to them, An enemy is done. So the servants said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather? They said, No, lest in gathering the weeds you root up the wheat among them. Along with them. Let them grow we together until the harvest and at harvest time I'll tell the reapers. Gather the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be found. But gather the wheat into my barn. And he put another parable before them saying The kingdom of heaven is like a grain of mustard seed, and a man took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all seeds, but when it is grown, it is larger than all the garden plants and become the tree, so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like the leaven that a woman took and hid in three measures of flour, until it was all leavened. All these things Jesus said to the crowds in parables. Indeed, he said nothing to them without a parable. This was to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet. You know, will open my mouth in parables. I don't know what, it be, what is being hidden since the foundation of the world. And he, then he left the crowds and went into the house. His disciples came to him and said, He explained to us the parable of the weeds of the field. Yes, the one who sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world, and the good seed is the sons of the king. The weeds are the sons of the evil one, and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are gathered and burned with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. And the son of man will send his angels, and they will gather out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all lawbreakers, and throw them into the fiery furnace. In that day there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth, and the righteous will... And the righteous will shine like the sun, like the sun in the kingdom of their father. He was ears, let them hear. 
the king of heaven's like treasure hidden in his nephew, which a man found and covered in a cupboard. And in his joy, he goes and sells all that he has and buys nephew. And again, the king of heaven was like a merchant in such a fine palace, who, on finding one pearl of great value, went and sold all that he had and bought it. And again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and gathered a fish of every kind. When it was full, men drew it ashore and sat down and sorted the good into containers, but threw it away for bad. So it will be at the end of the day. Now angels will come out and separate the evil from their righteous and throw them into the fire of furnace. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all these things? They said, Yes. They said to them, Therefore, every scrap who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like a master of the house, who brings out of his treasure and what is new and what is old. And when Jesus had finished these parables, he went away from them. And coming to his hometown, he taught them in their synagogue, so that they were astonished. And said, Where did this man get this wisdom and these mighty works? Is not this the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called? Is not his mother called Mary? And are not his brothers James and Joseph and all these things? And Simon and Judas. And are not all his sisters with us? When, where then did this man get all these things? And uh, they took offence at him. But she said, A prophet is not without honour except in his hometown and in his own household. And he did not do my, many mighty works there because of their unbelief. And at that time, Herod the Terror, Tetra, Tetra, heard about the fame of Jesus, and he said to his servants, This is John the Baptist. He has been raised from the dead. And that is why this miraculous powers are at work in him. For Herod has seized John and bound him and put him in prison for the sake of Herodias, his brother's wife, his brother Philip's wife, because John has been saying to him, It is not lawful for you to have her. And although he wanted to put him to death, he feared the people, because they held him held him to be a prophet. Now when Herod's birthday came, the daughter of Herodias danced he danced before the company and pleased Herod. Then he promised a he promised her with an oath to give her whatever she might ask. Prompted by her mother, she said, Give me the head of John the Baptist here on the pal, pal, platter. And the king was sorry, but because of his eyes and his guests, he commanded it to be given. And he, he sent and had John beheaded in his place. His hair was brought on a platter and given to the girl. And she brought it to her mother. And his disciples came and took the body and buried it. And they went and told Jesus. Now when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there and abode to a desolate place by himself. And when the crowds heard, they followed him on foot from the town. And when he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion on them, and he healed their, healed their sick. Now when it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a desolate place, and the day is now over. So then the crowds away to go into the villages and buy food for themselves. And Jesus said, we, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. And he said to him, We only have five loaves here and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. And he ordered the Christ to sit down on the cross, and taking the five loaves and the two fish, and he looked up to heaven and said, Blessing. And he broke the loaves and gave them to his disciples, and the disciples gave them to the crowds, and they all ate it and were satisfied. And they took up twelve baskets full of the broken pieces left over. And those who were ate, ate were about five thousand men, besides women and children. And immediately he made the disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side, and while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed all the crowds, he went up to, on the mountain by himself to pray. And even came, he was there alone. But the, but the boat the, this time was a long way from the land, and even by the waves. But the wind was against. And in the fourth march of the watch of the night, he came to them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified and said, It is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. And immediately Jesus spake to them, saying, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. And Peter answered him, Lord, if, you, if it is you, command me to come out to you on the wood. And he said, Come. And so Peter got out of the boat and walked, walked on the wood and came to Jesus. And he saw and when he saw the wind, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. He just immediately reached out to him and took hold of him, saying to him, Are you of little faith? Why did you jump? And when they got into the boat and the wind ceased. And the news in the boat and the boat worshipped him, saying, Surely you are the Son of God. And when they crossed him, he came to land at Sarah. And when he and the men of that place recognized him, he sent him round to all that region and brought to him all the street, and implored him that they might only touch the fringe of his garment. And as many and as many as touched it were made well. Then Pharisees and scribes came to Jesus from Jerusalem and said, Why do your disciples break the tradition of the elders? For well, they do not wash their hands when they eat. He answered them, Why do you break the commandment of God for the sake of your tradition? 
Now God command, when you have father and you have mother, and says, Who are, and whoever reveals father or mother must surely die. Uh, if you say, If anyone tells his father or mother, what you would gain from me is given to God, and you need not honor his father. And for the sake of your tradition, you have made void the word of God. You hypocrites! What did I, well did Isaiah prophesy of you when he said, uh, His people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. And he called the people to him and said to him, He and understand is not what goes into the mouth that defiles a person, but what comes out of the mouth that def this defiles a person. And the disciples came and said to him, do you know that the Pharisees were offended when they heard the saying? He yes, answered, Every planet that my heavenly father has not planted will be written up. Let them alone. They are blind guides. And if the blind will lead the blind, both will fall into a pit. But Peter said to them, Him, yeah, explain the parable to us. And he said, If you if are you also still without understanding, and do you see that whatever goes into the mouth passes in the stomach and is expelled? But what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart, and this defiles a person. Uh, out of the heart come evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, and theft, false witness, slander. These are what defil a person. Uh, to eat with their unwashed hands does not defil anyone. And Jesus went away from there and withdrew to the district of Tyre and seen. And behold, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and was crying, Have mercy on me, a little son of David. My daughter is severely oppressed by a demon. But he did not answer her word, and the disciples came and begged her, saying, Send her away, for she is crying out after her. He answered, I'll send her only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And when she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. And he answered, It is not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. He said, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Grace, O woman, great is your faith. Be it done to you as you desire. And her daughter was healed instantly. Jesus went on from there and walked. Walked beside the Sea of Galilee. Sea of Galilee, and he went up on the mountain and sat down there. And the great crowds came to him, bringing with them the lame, the blind, the crippled, the mute, and many others. And they put them at his feet, and he healed them. So that the crowd wondered, and they saw the mute speak, the crippled healthy, the lame walking, and the blind see. And they glorified the God of Israel. And Jesus called his disciples to him and said, I have compassion on the crowd because they have been with me now three days. And have nothing to eat. I am unwilling to send them away hungry, lest they fail on the way. And the disciples said to him, Where are we going? Where are we to get enough bread in such a desolate place to be so great a crowd? And Jesus said to them, How many loaves do you have? And they said, Seven, and a few small fish. And directing the crowd to sit down on the ground, and he took the seven loaves and the fish, and having given thanks, he broke them and gave them to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowds, and they all ate what and they all ate and were satisfied, and they took up seven baskets full of the broken pieces left over. Those who were eight were four thousand men, besides the women and children. After sending away the crowd, he got into the boat and went into the region of Magadai. And when the Pharisees and Sadducees came to him to test him, they asked him to show them a sign from heaven. He answered them, When is evening, you say, it will be fair weather, for the sky is red in the morning, and in the morning it will be stormy today. For you, the sky of red and threatening, and you know how to interpret the appearance of the sky, but you cannot interpret the signs of the times. And even an adulterous generation seeks for a sign, but no sign will be given to it except the sign of Jonah. So he left them and departed. And the disciples reached the other side, they had forgotten to bring any bread. So he said to them, Watch and be aware of the leaven of the Pharisees and Sadducees. And they, they began discussing it among themselves, saying, We brought no bread. And uh, Jesus, aware of this, said, You are you a little faith. Why are you discussing among yourselves the fact that you have no bread? Do you not yet perceive? Do you not remember the five loaves for the four th five thousand? And how many baskets you gathered? Or the seven loaves for the four thousand? And how many baskets you gathered? Mm. And how is it that you fail to understand that I did not speak about bread? You were of the leaven of the Pharisees and Sadducees, and they understood that he did not tell them to be with the leaven of bread, but the teaching of Pharisees and Sadducees. Now, when Jesus came into the district of Caesar Phil, Caesarea Philippi, he asked the disciples, Where do people say that the Son of Man is? And they say, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, Well, well who do you say I am? I am Pierre replied, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon Bar Jonah, for flesh and blood have not revealed 
and has not revealed this to you. My, my Father who is in heaven, who is in heaven, and whatever ye bind on earth shall be bound in him, and whatever ye loose on earth it shall be loosed in him. And he strictly charged the disciples to tell no one, to tell no one that he was the Christ. And from that time on, from that time, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and the chief priests and scribes, and be killed, and on on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, Well, I'll be it from you, Lord. This shall never happen to you. And then he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a hindrance to me, but you are not sitting in your mind on the things of God, but on the things of men. And then Jesus told his disciples, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. And for whoever would save his life will lose it. And whoever loses his life on my sake will find it. For what will it profit if a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his soul? Or what shall a man give in return for his soul? And the Son of Man is going to come with his angels in the glory of his Father. And then he will repay each person according to what he has done. Truly I say to you, there are some standing here who will not taste death until they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. And then after six days, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John his brother. And led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. And his face shone like the sun. And his clothes became white as light. And behold, there were there appeared to him Moses and Elijah, taking with him, talking with him. Then Peter said to Jesus, if, Lord, if it is good that we are here, it is good that we are here. If we wish, I will make three tents here. One for you and one for Moses and one for Elijah. And he was still speaking when behold, a bright cloud overshadowed him, and a voice from the cloud said, This is my beloved son, with him I am very well, very well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard of this, they fell on their faces and were terrified. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Rise and have no fear. And when they lifted up their eyes, they saw that no one but Jesus only. And as they were coming down the mountain, Jesus commanded them, Tell no one the wish, until the Son of Man is raised from the dead. And the disciples asked him, why did and what and the writer of the scribes say that first Elijah must come? He answered, Elijah does come, and he will restore all things. But I tell you that Elijah has already come, and they did not recognize him, but did to him whatever they pleased. And those so I said the Son of Man will serve myself at their hands. And the disciples understood that he was speaking to them of John the Baptist. And when they came into came to the crowd, a man came up to him and kneeling before him, said, Lord, have mercy on myself, for he is seizes and suffers terribly. But often he falls into the fire, and often into the wood. And I brought him to your disciples, and they cannot heal. And Jesus said, O faithless and twisted generation, how long am I to be with you? And how long am I to bear with you? Bring him here to me. And Jesus rebuked the demon, and it came out of him, and the boy was healed instantly. And then the disciples came to Jesus privately and said, why, would, why could we not cast it out? He said to them, Because you have little faith. For truly I say to you, If you have faith like a grain of mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, Move from here, and you will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. As they were gathering in Galilee, Jesus said to them, The Son of Man is about to be delivered into the hands of men, and they will kill him, and he will be raised on the third day. And they were greatly distressed. And the people came, and they came to Capernaum. The collectors of the two drachma to ask went up to Peter and said, Is your teacher not pay tax? Pay the tax. <coughs> he said, Yes. And when he came into the house, Jesus spoke to him first, saying, What do you think, son? And from whom do kings of the earth take toll or tax? From their sons or from others? And when he said, From others, what Jesus said to him, And the sons are free. However, not to give offense to them, go to the sea and cast a hook and take the first fish that comes up. And when you open, open his mouth, you'll find a shell. Take that and give them, give it to them for me and for yourself. And at that time, the disciples came to Jesus, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And calling him a child, he put them in the midst of them. And said, Children, I say to you, unless you become, turn and become like children, to children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoever humbles himself like this child is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Whoever receives one such child in his name, in my name, receives him. But whoever calls one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, 
It would be better for him to have a great milestone. He'll stay fastened around his neck to and to be drowned in the death of the sea. Where to the world for temptations to sin? For it is necessary that temptations come. Now worry to the one who by whom the temptation comes. And if your hand or your foot causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. For it is, be it is better for you to enter life crippled or lame than with two hands or two feet and be to be thrown into the into the eternal fire. And if your eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. It is better for you to enter life with one eye than with two eyes to be thrown into hell or fire. See that you do not despise one of these little ones. But I tell you that in heaven their angels always see the face of my father who is in heaven. What do you think? If men is a hundred sheep and when one of them has gone astray, does he not leave the ninety-nine on the mountain and go in search of the one that went astray? And if he finds it, truly I say to you, he rejoices over it more than over the ninety-nine that never went astray. So it is not the will of my father who is in heaven that one of these little ones should perish. If your brother sins yes, you go and tell him his fault. Between you and him alone, if he listens, if he listens to you, you gain your brother. Uh, if he does not listen, take one or two others along with you, that every charge may be established by the evidence of two or three witnesses. And if he refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if he refuses to listen even to the church, let him be to you a gentile and a tax collector. Surely I say to you, whatever you find on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. And again I say to you, if you two of you agree on earth about anything they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. And where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am among them. Then Peter came up and said to him, Well, how often will my brother sin against me, and I forgive him? And as many as seven times, Jesus said to him, and I do not say to you seven times, but seventy-seven times. Therefore the kingdom of heaven uh, may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with the servants. When he began to sell, one was brought to him who owed him ten thousand talents. And since he could not pay, the master ordered him to be sold, with his wife and his children, and all that he had, and payment to be made. So the servant fell on his knees, imploring him, Have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the master of that servant released him and forgave him the debt. And when that same servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him, he began to choke him saying, pay, pay what you owe. So his first servant fell down and played with him. Have patience with me, and I'll pay. He refused and put, him in, and put him in prison until he should pay the debt. And his first servant saw what had taken place. They were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to their master all that had taken place. And his master summoned him and said, You wicked servant, I forgive you all that debt because you pleaded with me. And should you not, you have mercy on your fellow servant, as I have mercy on you. In his anger, his master delivered his, him to the jails until he should pay all his debt. Uh, so, as so my heavenly father will do to every one of you, if you do not forgive your brother from your heart. Proverbs 12 Whoever loves discipline loves not joy, he who hates your grief is steep. A good man obtains hair from the Lord, a man of evil devices he can then. No one is established by wickedness, but the root of the righteous will never be moved. An excellent wife is the crown of her husband, which she brings shame. He is like rotten as sinners. The thoughts of the righteous are just, and the counsels of the wicked are deceived. The words of the wicked lie in wait for blood, but the mouth of the upright are lips. The wicked are overthrown in our name. But the house of the righteous will say, Man is commanded according to his good sense, but one of just a mind is despised. Better to be lonely and have a servant than to play the great man in blackbird. Whoever is righteous, Righteous has regard for the life of his beast, but the mercy of the wicked is cruel. Whoever works is like more plenty of bread, and he who follows worthless pursuits like sense. Whoever is wicked covets the spoil of evil dogs, evil dogs, and the fruit of the righteous best fruit. And even man is ensnared by the transgression of his lips, but the righteous escape from trouble. And from the fruit of his mouth, a man is satisfied with good, and the work of a man's hand comes back to him. The way of a fool is right as his nose. The wise man listens to it like, but the vexation of the fool is made at once, but the prudent no ignores it himself. Whoever speaks the truth goes on its evidence, but a false witness others to seek. And there's one whose rash words, rash words, uh, like sword thrust, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. Truthful lips endure forever, but a lying tongue is but for a moment. She is in the heart of those who devise it, but those who plan peace have joy. No ill befalls the righteous, but the wicked are filled with trouble. Lying lips are a double nation to rule. But those who act faithfully are as delight. The great man concealed knowledge, but the hand of fools, part of fools, proclaims folly. The hand of the diligent will rule, while the slothful will be put to false labor. 
Anxiety in a man's heart lays him there, but a good one makes him glad. One who is righteous is a guide to his neighbor, and that the way of the wicked leads it from astray. Whoever is lawful will not waste his gain, but the daughter man will get precious wealth. In the path of righteousness there is life, in his pathway there is no death. Psalm 49. Hear this, all peoples, give ye all inhabitants of the world, both low and high, rich and poor together. My mouth shall speak wisdom, good meditation, and my heart shall be understanding. I incline my ear to a prophet, I will solve my riddle in the music, to the music of the light. Why should I fear in times of trouble, and the iniquity of those who treat me surrounds me? Those who trust in their wealth, and boast of the abundance of their riches. Join a man, who ransom, a milk, or give to the God the price of his life. No, the ransom of their life is costly, and can never suffice. May he should live on forever, and never see the pain. For he sees that even the wise die, the fool and the stupid lie, must perish, and leave their wealth to others, their graves are their homes forever, their dwelling places to all generations. Uh, they are called, they, they call the names by their own names. Man in his part will not remain. He is like the beast that perish. Yeah, this is the path of those who have forced confidence. Yet yeah, after them people approve of their boasts. Like sheep they are born in for sure, death shall be their shepherd. And the upright shall rule over them in the morning. And if the worm shall be consumed, and shall with no place to dwell. And the God will ransom my soul for the power of shall. For he will receive me. Be not afraid when a man becomes rich, and when the glory of his house increases. And when he dies, he will carry nothing away. The glory will not go down after him. For though while he lives, he counts himself less. And though you get praise when you do well for yourself, his soul will go to the generation of his fathers. But he will never again see light. And in his pomp, yet without understanding, is like the beast that perish. Now thus done, I should now do the Lord's prayer. Please bow your heads, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, you will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, we give us our debts as you risk of given our debtors. We use not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil. Blessed is the kingdom and the power and the glory of ever. Amen. See you tomorrow. Bye.